being leader of both the party and the country has been an incredible experience. Along with my cabinet and caucus colleagues, we have steered the country through the global financial crisis, which was arguably the worst recession since the Great Depression. We have stood with Christchurch in the wake of earthquakes, the greatest natural disaster to hit our country since 1931. And we have mourned the victims of the Pike River mine disaster, one of the saddest days our small nation has endured in recent times. During my time as Prime Minister, the government has positioned New Zealand so that our economy could harness the opportunities offered by a burgeoning Asia and a more connected world. Reforms have been far-reaching, including substantial changes to our tax, welfare, planning and labour laws, not to mention the successful partial sell-down of state companies, the considerable overhaul of our justice, security and corrections agencies and, of course, trade liberalisation. Ten years since I first became the leader of the National Party, I believe we can look back on advanced race relations and real momentum in the treaty settlement programme. We also have a more confident, confident outward-looking and multicultural New Zealand that competes and succeeds on the world stage. Throughout these years, I've given everything I could to this job, the job that I cherish and the country that I love. All of this has come at quite some sacrifice for the people who are dearest to me, my family. For my wife, Brona, there have been many nights and weekends spent alone, many occasions that were important to her that I simply could not attend. Uh, my daughter, Steffi, and my son, Max, have transitioned from teenagers to young adults while coping with an extraordinary level of intrusion and pressure because of their father's job. I thank them for their tolerance. Brona and I are immensely proud of them. My family has also had remarkable opportunities it experiences as we have met people and visited places from one end of the country to the other. We have celebrated alongside fellow Kiwis in their happiest times and wept with them in their saddest. Simply put, it has been for me the most remarkable, satisfying and exciting time of my life. But despite the amazing career I've had in politics, I've never seen myself as a career politician. I certainly never wanted uh, my success in politics to be measured by how long I spent in Parliament. The National Party is in great shape. Bill English has told me that in all his years here, ours is the most cohesive cabinet he has seen. And I'm personally humbled and gratified that after eight years as Prime Minister, my personal support from the public remains high. I absolutely believe we can win the next election. But I do not believe that if you ask me if I was committed to serving out a fourth uh, term, that I could look the public in the eye and say yes. And more than anything else in my time here, I've tried to be straight and true with New Zealanders. I also believe that leadership change for the right reasons and handled well is good for a political party. For all of these reasons, I told my Cabinet and caucus colleagues of my decision to step down as leader of the National Party and as Prime Minister. It's my expectation that on Monday the 12th of December, National MPs will hold a special caucus meeting to select a new leader and later that day I will tender my resignation to the Governor-General. This has been the hardest decision I've ever made and I don't know what I'll do next, but for me this feels the right time to go. It gives the Cabinet and caucus plenty of time to settle in with a new leader before heading into the next election. With a proud record of strong economic management, a commitment to the most vulnerable in our society and lots of ideas to keep lifting New Zealanders up in the world. It would be easy for me to say that I've made this decision solely to rediscover the personal and family life I once had, and that is a factor, but is one amongst many. Over the years, I've observed many leaders who, in a similar position, failed to take this step. I can understand why it's an incredibly hard job to leave. But for me and the National Party, this is a good time to go. Party membership is high and the party is well funded. The caucus is talented and eager to serve. And one of the achievements of which I'm proud is having built with my colleagues a cabinet team that is capable, committed and cohesive. That is a great legacy for National's next leader. Just as I grasp the challenge of leadership, so will a new leader. Inevitably, they will bring their own personality, emphasis and priorities to the role. This is part of the process that allows a long-serving government to continue delivering. For my part, I'm confident that the caucus has a number of individuals who would make a fine future Prime Minister. It is inevitable I will be asked who I will vote for at the caucus meeting on December the 12th. 
Whoever the caucus selects will have my unwavering support, but if Bill English puts his name forward, then I will vote for him. For 10 years now, Bill and I have worked as a team. I have witnessed firsthand his leadership style, his capacity for work, his grasp of the economy, his commitment to change, and most of all his decency as a husband, a father, a friend, a colleague, and as a politician. Bill has, I believe, grown a great deal since he was last the party leader. Fifteen years on, he is more experienced and the party and political cycles are quite different. I believe that National under Bill's leadership would win the election in 2017. This is not the time to thank all of those who have made the past ten years possible for me. Nor can I stand here without acknowledging Brona, Sefi and Max, who have sacrificed a lot for me to be able to do what this job demands. No person in this role can succeed without the support of an enormous number of talented and dedicated individuals. I thank uh, my deputy, Bill English, the Cabinet and Caucus for their loyalty and energy, and of course my wonderful staff, so well led uh, by Wayne Eggerson, who's done more than I could have ever hoped or expected. I also wish to thank and acknowledge our support partners, ACT, United Future and the Māori Party, without whom the strong and stable government we have delivered would not have been possible. I have no doubt my successor will look to build upon these relations. Last but not least, I wish to put on record my everlasting gratitude to the people of Helensville for electing me and, the, and to the New Zealand public for the support, faith and encouragement. It's been a privilege to serve you all. I've always believed that the test of a good Prime Minister is that he or she leaves the country in better shape than they found it. Over time, others will judge whether I've done that. All I can say is that I gave it everything I had, I left nothing in the tank. Finally, while I intend to stay in Parliament long enough to avoid the cost and inconvenience a by-election would cause the people of Helensville, I will at some appropriate time prior to the next election step down as an MP. On that day, I shall walk from these buildings for the last time, a richer person for the experience and privilege of being here, and hoping and believing that New Zealand has been well served by the Government. Ali.